Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine Roll TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. I'm here for a very special edition of the show. I have the legendary Jean-Charles Boisset, the one and the only Jean-Charles Boisset of Boisset Collection. Right? Yes. Yeah, no, Boisset, well, everything. this is such a pleasure everything, to be yes. with you, Mark. Thank so, you. So uh, he is visiting San Antonio. This is such a treat because, honestly, nobody ever comes to San Antonio. And this guy came to San Antonio. I uh, worked some magic with, with, with my good friend um, who we don't talk about my, my real job, but my good friend who helps me with my real job who's in behind the camera. I said, hey, man, get me an interview. And he made magic happen. So thank you, Calvin, very much. Um, and thank you for saying yes. It's a and pleasure. We just had an awesome dinner here at Julia Bistro, Julia's Bistro. You've never been here before. With another Frenchman. Another Ooh, Frenchman, la la! right. Another Jean. Uh, but it was uh, Jean. Francois. Francois, yes. Anyway. Um, so, Jean-Charles, let's get a little introduction about you. How did you get into the industry? And let's, well, let's go, yeah. First, we got to start with some wine. Some bubbles, yes. Because, Mark, nothing ever starts without bubbles. And I know we've we've already enjoyed a lot of that bottle of wine. Yes, we have. We're starting with Burgundy. Salute. Yes. And this is really where I started, in the heart of Burgundy. Right. So I was very fortunate, Mark, to be born mm -hmm. in the heart of Rougeau in that small village of 186 inhabitants. And I was born in the vineyards. I was born literally making wine. Right. And my parents started to make wine in 1961 in the winery. I was born in 1969. And I was, you know, I believe predestined to make wine and to tend the vineyards, to be respectful of Mother Nature. Right. And to love life the way we do today. Nice, nice. Yeah. So uh, speaking of that, because uh, I know you do a lot of organic and bio yes, stuff and that's everything, sure. right? Yeah. That's I mean, every, everything we do, which is so important. There's right. an old Native American saying, mm -hmm. take off your shoes and caress the skin of Mother Nature. All right. Yeah. And I think it's very important. Be in touch with the source. Be in touch with what is below as what is above. Tilleric right. energy, cosmic energy. And that's so important because in many ways, we tend to forget that what is below us is as important as what is above. The inverted triangles, hence the Salomon star. Yeah. And I say that because early on, my grandmother was very powerful into pendulum energy, crystal energy, mm -hmm. quartz energy, and really identifying stream, magnetic flow, and all of that. And early on, I really got engaged into it. And thank God, because today, all what we do is respecting Mother Nature from right. anything that she has to offer to us. That's great. So organic farming, biodynamic farming, this is what we believe in. Awesome. So as I told you before, I went, I went to Burgundy, and um, I know that there's a, definitely a push to having more organic and more bio over there. And I think it's great because... Uh, just a little history lesson, you know, after World War II, we, we hit the earth with a bunch of chemicals and what happened to Burgundy, it, it died, it killed the soil. So now we're finally, after a couple of decades, we're finally getting back to having soil with life in it, right? right. Yes. Well, to, to that end, yeah. um, an anecdote. Mm -hmm. I'm onto our family estates, Domaine de la Vougerie, that mm -hmm. my sister and I created in 1998. And we work very closely with the University of Burgundy. A lot of students analyzing soil. Because you've got to realize, dear friends, soil is a human being. It has a rhythm, beats, grows, mature, and eventually declines and dies. You want a non-fertile soil, but you still want a lively soil. You want a soil with life within. I realized that the soil of Burgundy was very dead because we used too much pesticides mm -hmm. and what we call herbicides. And the life in the soil was in existence. So we had to regenerate life under us, which means insects, worms, all those kinds of things yeah. that when you tender your roses or you do your 
garden or your vegetables and what have you, you discover. And they all what we call beneficial insects. So I started to do horse plowing. And we yes. did that for over two decades. And one of the wines we'll have afterwards enjoyed it, which is the Bourgogne Pinot Noir Les Ursulines, is enjoying horse plowing. So we give back life to the soil. Nice. So uh, I, I actually visited Claude Bougeau when I went yeah. to Burgundy. It was a great experience. So I have a little testimony. So I have that. Calvin, Ooh la la. Maybe I'll bring my testimony tomorrow. <laughs> anyway. You um, must. We yeah, want to see right? you I with us. Dig it out. But so uh, let's talk about, let's talk about the, the, this one here since, we're, since we yeah. poured it. So what is this? This is our, your JCB caviar, right? Well, this right? is something very unique yeah. that no one has ever had. This is what we call in the world of sparkling wine champagne, a blanc de blanc. Blanc means white in French. Blanc de blanc is plural because it could be multiple white wine. In this case, it's a Chardonnay, 85%, mm -hmm. and 15%, a grape variety, dear friends, that is called Aligoté. Only in Burgundy raised, high minerality, high acidity, and it's a grape that really balances the act of the Chardonnay and brings it that very flinty, phenomenal, yeah. earthy, oystery, and um, you know, gunpowder type of type of mouthfeel. And I love it because we call it JCB caviar, mm -hmm. as you can see. Caviar because it's to be enjoyed with caviar, smoked salmon, seafood, oysters, sturgeon, and obviously trout. So when you think of this, this is really that wine that I'm very proud of. This is really pristine. This is really pearlized in the taste profile. And you can see the bubbles are very thin. Yes. And I love the fact, Mark, that you're serving it in a burgundy glass. Absolutely. Why not? When I do my reviews, I don't, I don't, well, I'll review sparkling wines just in the flute for like, just to show the bubbles. But when I actually do the evaluation, it's always in, it's always in regular wine. And glasses. why do you like it better in a regular glass? Because you can smell it. That's right. Because all, all the flute does is just makes it look pretty. That's it. I, I think your audience need to know, tell us about your, your phenomenal research on wine and why you became so passionate. <laughs> well, I'm not usually one getting interviewed. Well, I mean, but, I think you should tell. Well, I mean, the story, the story goes, um, you know, in 2005, I got introduced to some wine. I thought it was really cool in Chicago in a bar. And then later that year, I had a GM at a place I worked at, ESPN Zone. I go, I always talk about my former employees and my current. And he talked about the quartermaster sommeliers and about Disney who owns ESPN Zone having all these sommeliers. I didn't know what it was. And he said, if, you, if anyone likes wine, come see me. I did. He said, buy these books. I bought the books. He said, learn these things. And then he left. And then 2008, I moved down to San Antonio. About a year later, the wine bug kind of caught me again. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully if you've been watching the show a while, you know it was used to be called 1337 Wine. So I saw a wine from Noble Vines called 337. Thought it was 1337. It wasn't. That was actually the very first one I reviewed. Wow. I've actually reviewed that one three times because it has a little bit of a special meaning. Um, I also, it was the very last episode of 1337 wine. Not only did I review the 337 Noble Vines, but I reviewed the Ravenswood Zinn, which was the wine that got me into wine. So From um, Joel Peterson, dear yeah, friends, a great friend of ours. Absolutely. So from that point, you know, that was, this was my diary. And it's been a wild ride since 2009. Name change is allowed me to meet great people like Jean-Charles, travel you. all over the world and meet some incredible people. So that's what it's done for me. And it helps me with my studies and it just gives me extra access. Like, But that's amazing, yeah. dear friends. When you think about it, that shows you everything is possible. When you have a desire, yeah. when you have a willingness to learn, when you have the willingness to go on the non-comfortable zone of your personality, you can become like Mark, eventually an expert. I mean, he studies, he knows, he's into it, but you can all be like Mark if you wish to do so. And I, I really want to commend you for Thank that. Thank you. So, Salute. you know, to, to the last bubble. <laughs> last Salute, bubble. amor, y quizás, no lo sé si es dinero, pero sexo. Way more languages than I know, except for like labels, wine labels. I can well, kind of pronounce them. That's a language <laughs> on itself. It is. And wow. that's actually cool. So, so my background, you know, I took Latin in high school and in college. I actually have a minor in Latin in college. 
Um, wow. But so all the Romance languages makes a little more sense when I can see them, like French, French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese a little bit, though. They kind of they kind of pronounce things a little weirdly in Portugal. But it's kind of fun to learn the Portuguese pronunciations, which yeah. my viewers have seen me uh, have fun with. Wow. Um, but so having that, but then then German, since German, English is mostly German, seeing all the connections with language and then learning it with wine. And then prior to this, I, we didn't talk about this. I'm actually a musician. That's my degree. So having all the Italian words from, from music, so yeah, language is like really wow. cool, and music and wine are so, so interconnected. You play instruments? Uh, so piano. Piano. I don't really play much right anymore, but in my instrument, keyboards. I was electronic music in college. Wow. Yeah. We got to get you to play. Jean Michel Jarre. Jean Michel Jarre. Jean Michel Jarre. Amazing. My favorite. I've my seen... favorite concert with yeah. him was in Lyon. In mm. fact, when he got all the cities. Was, was that was that the was that yeah. when the Pope was there? Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm so jealous because. I didn't get you to. You know it. Oh, yeah. Wow. So uh, a few years One ago. One of the most amazing. He's amazing. Phenomenal yeah. concert of all and it, time. So, and actually, his his parents and your grandparents have a connection with the resistance, don't they? Yeah, big time. So My grandparents. A couple things about Well, <laughs> you know, we love music, but yeah. talk about the United States. So that leads yeah, us yeah, to yeah. Burgundy. Burgundy, yes. My grandparents were born a few kilometers away from this wine became the school teachers of that area. Yeah. And my parents were born during the war. My grandparents mm -hmm. were resistant. Right. And they used pendulum and energy, quartz energy, and all magnetic energy to find one another during that time and had a whole underground system. Welcome the American forces in 44. And then it's history. That's where the love yeah. of the family for America started. Awesome. So to America, dear friends, Nothing yeah, better, the United States of America. Absolutely. So yeah, uh, so Jean-Michel came to New York a few years ago. I changed my vacation plans to go see him at Radio City Music Hall. Wow. And then in 18, he came to Texas. He went to Dallas and Houston, where the other concert for Lyon, so it was a Houston yep. Lyon album. So I saw him in both cities. Amazing. Oh, I had front row in Houston, uh, six rows back in Dallas. I loved it. It was great. So a combination of electronic yeah. music. Yeah. To, yeah. It was awesome. To sound so, uh, and lights. and Oh, it's great. If you don't but know I'm him, you need to look him up. He's I'm got a so, new, new album coming out in about a month. I'm so glad you love Pino. Yeah. Pino's great. Now, this Pino, this Pino, I have a, a, a very much affection for. Uh, it was something that we sold at Morton's. It was the first time I ever yeah. got introduced to it. It's a very reasonably priced uh, burgundy. Yeah. I know sometimes burgundy can be a little pricey. Um, but Too even, much. But even on the even on the wine list at Morton's a few years ago, it was at a great price that even I could afford. Um, so tell us some more about this particular well, it's, wine. It's, it's really a very like unique wine. wine because this is the winery actually that my parents, Claudine and Jean Claude, started in 1961. So I have a lot of respect and obviously emotion as I talk about those wines. They started in the living room. This is how I started to make wine. Yeah, I've been making wine literally since I'm five years old. That's why today I don't say I'm a winemaker because I did it for so long and so early in life that I saw them really becoming passionate about wine. So in 1981, they bought this amazing site in Nuit Saint-Georges, which was an Ursuline site. The Ursuline is an order in the Catholic religion, Benedictine Ursuline. And in 1640, those sisters built those cellars that are amazing, you know, not gothic, Roman shape, beautiful shape, very nice, all following the golden ratio principle. Mm -hmm. So um, all following that Pythagore emotional feel. And, you know, it's been an amazing journey because that winery, Les Ursulines, and that Pinot is really the representative of what Burgundy is all about. You blend all the Pinots from the region and you end up with this wine, which is, as Mark said, one of the most competitive wine of Bergen. It's maybe $35, and it's the most difficult to make. The $3,000, the $2,000 <laughs> is not hard to make because it's already predefined. Yeah. We know where it is, we know how it is. It's Clos Bougeot, Echezo, Clos de la Roche, Bonne Mar, Musili, Charles Chambertin. Pomar, Premier Cru, Bon Premier Cru, you name it, I could go on for another 720 words. <laughs> this is 
difficult because you blend. It's like mm -hmm. making a sauce at home. You're in your kitchen and you're going to make a... Yes. Not the Béarnais. Thank you. <laughs> so it's like making that wine sauce for 96 hours. Yes. That keep being reduced, and then you taste the intensity, the richness, and then you say, ooh la la, epiphany moment, this is it. So this one for me really represents the introduction, the conclusion, what Bergen is about, what sensuality, spontaneity, charisma, and femininity in many ways, because why femininity? Very refined very yeah. elegant, very ethereal, extremely romantic. I'm in love with this wine, and it comes, as you've noticed, Mark, with a screw cap. So when you mm -hmm. think about it, this is easy, never a cork taint, and this is easy to open, easy to drink, and this is Les Ursulines. We make another 35 wines. Grégory Patria is one of my closest friends of 23 years. So we really re-engineered the winery together. Yeah. Organic, biodynamic, no yeast, endogenous yeah. yeast, no filtration. And here it is. This no is, fighting. This is the wine. So we had a lot of different wines at dinner. And this was actually my favorite of, of the group, which, which is cool. I mean, I love Pinot Noir, but... I would have, some people would have thought this would have been my favorite. Yeah. And this was delicious wine. We're going to get to this wine in a minute. But this was my favorite. And I loved it. Well, I'll, I'll yeah. give you a little more. <laughs> Look at that, dear Merci. friend. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. This is how Mark gets more wine. He loves it. But this is um, important, dear friends, because this is a single variety. Pinot is always alone. It's like Chardonnay. Very rare, as we did here, mm -hmm. blended it with Aligoté. Yes. Very rare. Here, Pinot is 100% Pinot, so it's a red grape with a white juice. It gets red thanks to the co-fermentation of the skin with the juice. And after 30 days open-top fermentation, this is the result. I'm crazy for this. Some of us had fish tonight. Some of us had seafood tonight. Some of us had oyster Rockefeller and had other steak. things. And it worked Someone had very pork well. pork chop. I mean, we had a... So Pinot is one of the most wine of uh, food friendly wines out there um because you can go with so many different things can't go with everything but some people like it with all kinds of stuff that's but the united very, nation wine yeah it's very very food friendly so it's, if you're trying to bring peace between ukraine and russia you give them a glass of pinot instead of vodka peace will come <laughs> absolutely <laughs> So after this, we're going to try Buena Vista. Yes, this has a really cool history. And Mark, you're born American, right? I'm born American, yes. Where, New Jersey, right? New Jersey, yes. Palisades Park, Exit 16, New, New Jersey. <laughs> One of the most amazing states in the United States. That's where it started. Garden State, the Garden State. Yeah. It really is a Garden State. I know where I'm, where I'm from, it's not a lot, not really pretty. But you go into the like South Jersey or like Northeast, sorry, Northwest Jersey. Yeah. Amazing. You know, all the, yeah, it's amazing, amazing country. Yeah. So, you know, what is important, dear friends, is to be proud of your own country, to be proud of what your country produces. Here, this is the beginning, the first winery in the history of California, 1857. This is the first. A man out of Eastern Europe, hungry, mm -hmm. a very powerful aristocracy, the empire of Austria, Hungary, and to some extent Germany, came to the US and had a dream to produce amazing wines. And he succeeded. This is the wine he did. So he had the largest estate, the leading program around the world, the most highest rank winery in Austria, London, Paris in 1860. And he became the most well-known winemaker at the time. And this is what we call Chateau. Buena Vista. Chateau Buena Vista is this gorgeous building. There's two. Bond number one, bond number two. The first winery, Carla, in the history of California. Voila, Mark. Voila. I mean, this is the Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the wine that is Napa Valley. So we released a few years ago, and it was in 1861 when the Count started to plant Cabernet in Napa. Mm -hmm. And it became so important, so prevalent, 
that we said four years ago, we're going to reintroduce it. I knew a major, you know, promoter of history. You, you're such a history buff. That's what I love about you. Learning about wine really, like, you know, when I was in school, history was boring. But then I got into wine. Even music history was boring. I hated my music history courses. Now I love music history. Sure. I love history because wine is so integrated with history. You know, other, other alcohol too, but wine so much in the history. I want to do a yeah. show with you, Mark, with music. You play the piano, we <laughs> oh, drink man. wine. We drink wine, we play sound the piano. My music will sound very good. I'll have no, to no. practice. Uh, but but that, that gives me reason to practice, right? <laughs> but this is so cool. So I would love to ask you a question as we talk okay. about yeah. the Napa Cab. How did you start Wine World TV? I and so, why? Because so, I'm sure most of you have no clue about how Mark did it. So with the 1337, right, that was the first iteration of everything. You know, it was a video diary of my studies because I was trying to study for that introductory sommelier exam. And it worked. I passed my exam. And I thought, okay, that's good. But let me try to do the, the next level because a certified sommelier sounded really important. And that was, I thought, great for my career in, in, um, in uh, restaurants. So I kept doing that, and like, and uh, see, it was ten I got that. So in thirteen I got my certified, and honestly, I thought, okay, I've accomplished my goal. I can stop doing this. So I took like a month off, and I was like, you know, I really enjoy doing this because this this video stuff became part of me. Yeah. Right. So I was like, well, he's so good at it. And I was at that point interviewing people, and while I love doing reviews, and when I when I do my trips and I do you know I do all those interviews. And I come back home and I'm, I get on my set and I'm like, oh, it's so great to be on the set to do reviews. My interviews are also so much fun because I get to meet yeah. people like you. I get to, when I travel the world, it's, it's wonderful. So I didn't want to miss that. I didn't want to lose doing that. So I said, yeah. I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to try to go to the next level. So a couple of years ago, I was like, you know, not a lot of traction going on with this thing. Must be the name, must be a lot of things. So let's analyze where I can improve my show. So one of the things I thought of was to make the name easier. Yeah. Because to try to explain the 1337 and the elite thing and all that, yes. most people, they don't, they don't get it. Well, it's a little esoteric. For it is. scientific. It is, yeah. You even, are very scientific and you even, get it. Yeah, even with the table here, no one really knew what I was talking about. Yeah. I had to explain it. So I finally said, look, let's make something that's more uh, user-friendly yeah. to get back into technical stuff, right? Yeah. Wine World TV. Well, it's, it explains everything I do. I do the whole world of wine. I love wine. I love wine from all over the world. I mean, yes, you have to, I sometimes have to pick the favorite kid, but I'm all about the new, interesting, and different. That's been my, my mantra the whole time I've been doing this. What's new? What's interesting? What's different? Right. If I've never heard of it. Like you actually, you have a wine. I, I think it's the one from India that has Marcelon yeah, in it. Yeah, Jaina. Is it the one that has Marcelon in it? That's right. Sorry, Such I don't normally memory. use adult language on my thing, but I love Marcelon. I got introduced. There's a, a wine from Mexico that uses it. So Marcelon, if you don't remember or you don't know, is Cabernet Sauvignon and Grenache, but it kind of acts like Gamay, which I love Gamay. Right. Right. And uh, if you don't know, I did his Momasan uh, Cote, uh, sorry, Morgan Cote, I'm sorry, Le Charme, not, not Cote de Pete, the Le Charme. Yeah. I did that a, like three or four years ago. Great stuff. Um, but... I really like that Marcelon grape. That's brand new to me. I just found out about it this year. Yeah. So to me, that's really cool. So again, the Wine World TV, it doesn't matter where the wine comes from. I've done wines from India. Haven't done yours yet. I plan to do, hopefully do it at some point in time. Uh, I've done wines from, you know, Armenia. I've done wines from Georgia. I've done wines from, I think I've done some from Slovenia. I've done Hungary. I mean, I've done wines from almost, not everywhere, but a lot of different places because I so much love the idea of what wine does right. and where these wines are coming from. So to bring this back into what I do here, that's what the Wine World TV was. You know, encompass what I already do and then analyze what I could do better in my reviews mostly. Yeah. Uh, my interviews I felt are pretty good the way I do them. But as you saw, you, I have, I upgraded my lights. You know, I, um, everyone's I love it. Production. This is theater. So it's a professional production. I have the feeling to be at Carnegie Hall. But the funny Hall. part is I still use my phones as my cameras because you know what? These phones are, are great for cameras. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so yeah, that's what I do with all this. And it's been an amazing couple of years. I've had some really great traction, uh, some really great, uh, actual, you know, more subscribers. I'm reaching those goals. Um, but this is definitely a, a labor of love. 
and yeah. I love doing it, and I can't see myself ever stopping oh, doing I, it. I, and you should never. Yeah. So tell us about what you think about this, this wine. Cab. So this wine, Chateau Buena Vista, Cabernet Napa Valley, and you have, dear friends, one of the best wine critique on the planet. So this Mark is really himself. Cool. This is really cool. So it has this really rich. There's like a Luxardo cherry, but it wasn't cherry. It's more like blackberry and, and raspberry. So that looks like Sardo, um, like a uh, uh, syrup thing, right? It's not sweet, but it has that has that aroma to it. it. Has that richness, that depth, that that complexity to it. I mean, um, there isn't a. I know. I mean, I know there's oak on this, and it's like 24 months, right? It's a couple of years, a couple of years of age on this. So it's really well integrated, but it adds it adds some really great uh, aromas to it. And then when you put it on the palate. Those flavors come through, but now we're in a now the, the it starts you know on that sweeter attack, but then it finishes yeah. drier. So it's a little bit kind of like an older world wine. Okay, that's right. But you still get that really great blackberry, raspberry, luxardo type of thing. But you also get a little bit of tobacco in there. You're getting a little bit of earth in there. It's more fresh tilled uh, soil. Um, you're getting that vanilla, that clove, that cinnamon, the baking spice. Those are your barrels, you know, kind of coming in. If we're going to kind of do with music, so. You have different different players in the band, and they're contributing different things. I actually did a whole thing about Bordeaux and the five grapes of Bordeaux. Yeah. They're all musicians. You should check it out. Um, anyway, I love it. Yeah, but Carla, you, you should be you with think us. About, if you think about this, we can hear you now. <laughs> if you think about this, it's also kind of like when you um, are mastering the, the the song. So they'll emphasize certain frequencies in EQing. So all these things are in a good balance. You get certain things at certain points of time, but then things fade off and other things come, come to the forefront. So that's what this wine's doing. There's a lot of complexity to it, and it's really rich and, and wonderful. Do, I love the wine. Do I like this one better? Yeah, but that's okay. Jean Charles might like this one better. That's cool. Calvin well, might like know, this one better. That's you, fine. You know, I like them all because they also. Well, they're all your children. Well, <laughs> that too, but it. Doesn't but have to but, be always the but case. But they're different, they and you can enjoy fit. exactly. You can enjoy what makes them different, what makes them unique. And again, you know, I joke with the whole favorite child thing, but wine is kind of like that. Or it's yeah. like your favorite bands. You know, you may like this band today, you may like this other band tomorrow a little bit better. That style of music, or within one band, they make a bunch of different music or over different albums. So wine is so great because depending on your mood, you may be looking for. Uh, Cremante Borgogna, you might be looking for uh, uh, Burgundy, uh, or your Borgogna, we're not supposed to say Burgundy, right? Anyway, <laughs> Bur so Borgogna, good. Borgogna. So you want a Borgogna, or you want like Napa Cab, or you may want something else. What would you serve the food with? Well, I love your idea of the caviar and the oysters. Now, yeah. we discussed I don't eat seafood. I did have caviar once, but and it was great caviar, but I don't have a palate for it, so yeah. it, it was lost on me. It was just salty, but... I can see that. I can see what this what this will do with it. And oysters and seafood. I mean, I've had seafood and wine, so I know what the pairing's yeah. like. But, and I know it's kind of the cliche-ish thing, fried foods. Because the bubbles and the That's fried right. food is great. So fried chicken. Fried chicken. Chicken, chicken, chicken my steak. Chicken yeah. my steak with gravy. Oh, that'd be great. Um, with this one, this is such a versatile wine. Now, I had the steak frites. Um, so it was, it was a uh, hanger steak uh, with chimichurri sauce. So it was really cool. And then the palm frites, it was great uh, fries, uh, steak fries. So, um, but I mean, you can do lamb, you can do pork, you can do salmon, you can do tuna. Uh, I guess you can do oysters with it. Um, but I mean, it's great. And when we and we're getting closer to Thanksgiving when this when this show comes out, this is great turkey wine. You have that cranberry stuff. And what's happening is you're getting the you're getting all that kind of secondary and tertiary flavors with this. I know it's still a young wine, but you're still getting that force for you're getting all that earthiness out of it. But you're still getting that ripe fruit. It's all that cherry, and you can even say there's a little bit of cranberry in this. I mean, it's it's a great it's a great wine. And then with this one, you're getting to that richness. So yeah, you're gonna have that ribeye. I, I'm I'm more of a filet mignon guy, but ribeye, New York strip, uh, beef stew, or I mean, honestly, I can see crushing this with a pizza, like a pepperoni pizza. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I'm hungry again. And and this wine again, it's it's it has that great fruitiness. You just see, it's like freaking out. Um, it is a great fruitiness, and I literally could drink this on its own. Yeah. 
like these I could drink on their own. I mean, well, of course I could drink that on my own, but these I think are better with food. Yeah. For sure. This one I could drink just by itself. Like I can start it with my meal and then when I'm done with my meal, finish the bottle. I watch some TV. Yeah. Maybe eat some cheese with it. Like, 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 um, you can do some Comte, uh, Comte actually you can do yeah. some Gruyere, uh, some Gouda, but you could also do Mimolette. Oh, I had some Mimolette the other day. It's great stuff. Um, I don't know if I could do a process with this. It's a little stinky. No, I think I would do go that there. One, yeah. So, okay, real quick, a process. All right, so I went to Burgundy, and I never knew about a process cheese before, and I had it on burgers, I had it on chicken, and yeah. then when I drove to Chablis, or I drive through, a process. I saw the cows. That make the cheese. So I love a pasta cheese, a stinky cheese, but it's. I really love your good. idea of a poisson burger. Yeah. Ooh. No, the, the uh, in the in the in the town square in Bone, one I can't. I think it's called the Back Commander. Cuisine. I think it's called the Commander. Oh, Commander. Yeah. Yes, they have a they have a burger with the cheese on it, yeah. and a couple other places in Bone had had the had the cheese on top of the on like uh, like a, a grilled chicken, That's chicken it. breast. Oh, so good. I'm not normally an adventurous eater, but. When I travel, I time. I sometimes get a more. I'm so glad you are. <laughs> a but burger yeah. with a poisse. Ooh la no, la. This this wine uh, really and it really speaks United States. Yeah. I know it. I know there's a little bit of a dryness at the end, like like a lot of European wines will. But it's 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 very much an American expression of this grape versus say something like Bordeaux, That's which it. I'm a big fan of Bordeaux, um, but this is definitely not shy and it shouldn't be, and it's not going to be confused with Bordeaux. And it shouldn't be. It needs. It, it speaks to the place. Yeah. It's not Argentina. It's not a Chile. It's not Australia. It speaks to United States. It's Napa Valley, California. Napa Valley. Is there anything better than this? Napa Valley. The great mind stuff. and the vision of the count yeah. is right in this glass. That's what I love. I mean, you look at Carla. You look at Colin. You look at Woody. You look at. Obviously, everyone with everyone us here, yeah. today. Mike and Calvin. I mean, we, uh, Holly left. Look our, at Mike. Our, our he cannot Holly be left. better. Ooh la la. <laughs> Calvin's here, yeah. Calvin's here. Uh, and, and, and look, they, they're serving another. They're having cheese again. Look having at that, cheese, those look at that. boys. No, I mean, this has been, first of all, the wines are great, which I knew they would be because I've had, I've had several of his wines before. Um, so I knew we have great wine. Having you uh, hang out with me is an absolute treat. Thank I've been you. honestly, I, I don't think I've told Calvin this. I've been wanting to interview you for years. Oh, thank you. For years. I'm honored. I'm like, I'm like, this is a this would be a perfect person to have on the show because you're very, uh, you're very personable. Thank you, you know, you're 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 you. I know you're great on camera. Like, you know what I mean? Thank like, you. sometimes my interviews, some of the people are a little bit like, this is what I do. Whatever. <laughs> you have an excitement to you, right? You have an excitement to you, and I've always known that. So Look, to me, it's an absolute on. treat, absolute treat that you were on the show. An honor, honestly. <laughs> no, all the honor is mine. And, and I want to tell you and all your friends watching that are really with Wine World TV, dear friends, you're going to follow this young man. What Mark has built and he's doing and is consistently building is phenomenal. I was very fortunate, Mark, to be born making wine. You know, we have very different lives. Yes. You know, I was very lucky. I fell into it since birth and I loved it. Hence, I developed my lifestyle around it. And I build the vision of my life around being in the US, which I love. I mean, your passion for wine is my passion for America. I'm a true American at heart. Yeah, what did you do as a kid? That's it. What did you, what did you play? Indians and cowboys. Yeah, and, right? And love the US. And we yeah. played a lot about American history. We played about the Quakers coming to Pennsylvania. We played about the Alamo Fort and the- Yeah, the you, went there. you went there today, right? Very much yeah. so. And yeah. then we played about the West Coast and we played about the Gold Rush. And we had all those amazing games as well as you know, the early 1800s when Napoleon sold Louisiana. We played about Bourbon Streets. And mm -hmm. why is it Bourbon Street, the Bourbon was called Bourbon because of the Bourbon name of the family from France, the Royalist. Yes. Who is the Bourbon family. Nobody knows this, but the Bourbon stems from the Bourbon blue blood of France. The Bourbon could only be sold on Bourbon Street because that's where the barrels were actually stamped to go to France and be taxed to bring money to France and then resold around the world. So 
you know, the French have always had that true intimate relationship with the U.S. And we have, yes. And I think it's not just commercial economics. It's just very emotional. It's not a culture. Well, I mean, so you go back to the even back to the revolution, right? You know, where we, you know, France was a, was a friend of ours, an ally of ours, right? Lafayette, you know, Jefferson, Jefferson, Jefferson coming over. You know, so I mean, we have we have a lot of uh, connections with France, um, and it's it's been great. You know, I'm going to tell you, I just watched a great movie, and I advise all of you to see it on Netflix or Amazon or whatever you 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 have. It's called Jefferson in Paris or Jefferson in France. Oh, I need to check that out. Yeah. Two hour and 19 minutes movie. I don't watch movies often. Gina and I, my lovely wife, uh, last weekend at 1 a.m. after a whole group of friends were over, we watched it. We closed the light at 4 a.m. after 20 minutes of talking about the power of an American at that time in the 1700s being in France convincing through the Marquis of Lafayette, the French to invest in the US to kick the English out and to pledge for American independence. Yeah. And I think this movie gives me shivers right now to tell you a little bit about it because I really think that symbolizes the friendship of our two nations. And I think your friendship for wine, your love of what we're doing to all what is happening around the world is wine brings us together. And Mark, I want to thank you so much for doing your show, for bringing people on the show, for introducing people to others, because we live through other people's experience. Yeah. We don't just read it in a book and it's a blend chapter in a black and white page. It has to be like this, animated and lively and fun. So. Merci beaucoup, Merci mon, ami. Beaucoup, mon ami. Well, I know <laughs> someone can have a little more wine. Look at go. that. And we can never taste with an empty glass. There we go. I know we're closing the place. We're closing the place, yes. Hey, the Thank sun is so going to be Thank rising you so much, everybody soon. Here. Yes. Salud. All right, folks. So we're going to wrap this up. So as always, Make sure you click like and subscribe. Every click, like, and subscription really helps build the channel. And also, I've clicked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and tell love, all love, your love. friends, tell all your friends about it, about the best wine show anywhere. Jean Charles. And so, Mark, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Molto grazie. Gracias. Danke schön. Aligato gozaimas. Cheche. We can continue shukran. <laughs> All the language are here to reward entrepreneurs, people who are willing to do things. Yes. People willing to be consistent, to have the discipline to continue, and the honor I have and all of us to be on your show. So thank you so thank much. You. And to everything you do. All right. Merci. Salut. Merci. Salute.